We are more than halfway through March, and I am more than halfway through this mad mess. So let's grab a rubber glove, and let's talk about 3D printing with light curing resin on the FL Sun S 3D printer. My friends at GearBest sent me the FL Sun S DLP 3D printer, and this thing is cool. I mean, just the fact that it's a DLP printer impressed the heck out of me. I had no idea what to expect. I knew it was a light curing printer, but I didn't realize it was DLP until I tested it out and saw it print a whole layer, just project a whole layer onto the bottom. And I was like, yes, it's a DLP printer. I've heard cool things about DLP 3D printing. When this arrived, it arrived with everything needed to print in it in this container, in its own container, just basically with, with plastic wrap around it. There was no box. It came just like this. Everything it needed was self-contained within its own little container. And I was super impressed with the economy of it. I continued to be impressed as I started playing with it. Full color touchscreen, yeah, that's pretty cool. But more than that, it can take models sliced in several different pieces of software that they're not G-code because this isn't a matter of moving things around. It's a matter of projecting layers and then moving it up with each layer. So not G-code. So there are different standards for making things to go for these printers. And this 3D printer can handle all of those standards, but it can also handle raw STLs. Yes! I've been wanting these printers to handle raw STLs forever, but this printer has a slicer on board. Now, there is some fuzziness about how big those models can be because while the manual says that you can only have them be a certain size, the ones that they put on the USB stick for testing out are already bigger than that one. Interesting. But that's okay. I think the message is clear. You should pre-slice these whenever you can. So I got it loaded up. I got my gloves on. They also send it with a little uh, breather apparatus to make sure that you don't inhale the fumes. So it's always a good idea. I should open that one day. But uh, this resin, the reason why we wear gloves and the masks is because this resin is unquestionably toxic. I've heard, and, and I'm not sure if this is right, but you can absorb a certain amount of this stuff and it won't harm you. But then at some point, and it's different for each person, you hit this break and all of a sudden this stuff will cause you severe allergic reaction. It's not good for you. Why that break? I don't know. And, and it, maybe that's not the case. Regardless, the message is clear. Gloves, breather, safety first. So I got it all set up. And uh, there really wasn't, I mean, the manual was pretty interesting on the leveling process. <laughs> it's all done on the screen and it's really cool. What you do is you, you re loosen the screws on the Z-bed. The Z-bed lowers itself down all the way to the bottom. And then while it's sitting there resting on the build plate, you tighten the screws back up so that it's in the right place. And I think that that's super cool. That's because this is such a mechanically simpler process than FFF 3D printing. It's just got the one motor, and so they can do simple little tricks like this. So I got it all set up. It, there was nothing in the manual about how do I put, what do I do with the resin? Do I just pour it in here, or is there some sort of reservoir that I'm supposed to keep it in? Well, without any clue if I was doing it right, I just dump the resin in here, and it turns out that was the right thing to do. Just make sure there's enough in here. The Z-plate lowers down. The first layer gets exposed and sticks to the Z-plate. Then it pulls itself out of the, the liquid and then allows the liquid to flow back in and pushes itself back in, then cures the next layer and repeats that process over and over. It's not a continuous curing process. That's because this is not the carbon 3D printer that has the oxygen permeable layer. Things are actually curing very close to the, the plastic here and it's more or less peeling off the plastic. Now this printer does not, like some other uh, light curing printers, peel it off with a rocking motion. It just trusts that it's going to be able to pop it off. And in my experience, if the first layer sticks properly, it will do that. But if it doesn't, 
your first print is going to look like my first print did. A big mess. So I got myself a strainer and I strained out the chunks and then I took the liquid and I poured it back into the bottle here and then I read the manual which said don't do that because once it's been exposed to a little bit of UV light it's not pure and you shouldn't mix it with the good stuff. Let's just hope that that doesn't come back and bite me. So I got it re-leveled and I think the problem was that my Z-Bud wasn't perfectly level so I tried it again and I did one of their test prints and I managed to print this. Now I could touch this without the gloves, it's perfectly cured. Once this stuff is cured it's perfectly safe to touch and it's a Cobra ring which is, you know, cool unless you're G.I. Joe. Uh, unfortunately I dropped this print just before recording this video and broke it but I've got some pictures from before the incident. Uh, and it's a very cool print and it proved that it worked, but once I had this done, you know me, I don't like doing test prints. I want to print my own models and so I tried printing this. Now this is, I call it the bad wizard, but it's basically my wizard pawn in the you shall not pass pose. And this model is designed to be hard to print on FFF 3D printers because it requires support, but it's got very thin parts. And so once you print it, it's going to want to break those off with the supports and it's, it's a difficult model to print. So I wanted to see what DLP printing would do with it. Now DLP printing still needs to worry about supports. However, the supports are generally speaking long thin strands that come up to a point, barely touch it, and then hopefully will be enough to, for the print to anchor onto and print as it goes, and then you just break them off. However, putting those supports on your model is complicated. Now, they do send you a piece of software called the L2 control software. And interestingly enough, the one that they send you is a pirated version. Now, I went onto their website because after I played with it, I was not impressed with how it made supports. It wasn't good. And I thought, well, maybe I will buy the full version and it will have a better support generation on it. No such luck. The current version of this software is now a subscription-based model, and it's very clear that they're pricing it outside of the range of consumer 3D printers. They're targeting a larger audience. So I guess using that software is out, but that's okay because it doesn't do very good supports. So instead, I took it into MeshMixer. MeshMixer allows you to place supports for this sort of 3D printing, but more than that, allows you to say where those supports go. Now, theoretically, models with these supports on them could be used on FFF 3D printers, and people have been doing that. It's very cool to do it. Uh, also, theoretically, the new version of Cura will build these supports for you, but it's still kind of experimental. Nevertheless, I got the supports on there. I printed the wizard, and before the incident, he was beautiful, holding his staff out, but uh, yeah, broke him too. <laughs> So at this point, I'm, I'm trying to print another model. I'm trying to print a decoder ring, see how close I can get the tolerances. And I'm having a lot of problems with it. I'm concerned that maybe my build vat has got some chunks on it. So I want to do a deep clean of this thing. So again, I strain out the plastic. I, I pour out the extra resin. I let it harden in the sun and just throw it away. And then I read the manual to see how to clean this thing out. And it said you can just take it put it in the sun, the resin will harden, and then you can pry it off. And I thought, really? Because it seems to me that if you're going to use a liquid and then harden it, you're going to end up with a perfectly matched mold that is not going to want to release very easily. But I decided to take them on their word. Maybe there's some shrinkage that goes on with this material and it'll pop itself off. There is no shrinkage. I was right. It is a perfectly molded, very hard piece of plastic that does not want to come off. I am not happy about that. So I'm sitting here with my blade, trying to scrape it off, doing the best I can, trying to be gentle, and yet, oh, I still punctured the film on the bottom. Now, at the time, I was having a hard time finding anybody else who had one of these 3D printers, and... The FL Sun website didn't have any information about this 3D printer, so I was more or less just kind of shooting in the dark, but 
At this point, I'm going, where do I buy some more of this film? I, I understand it's FEP film, and I'm trying to search for it. I put out word on Twitter. I asked for help, and somebody said, oh, you're barking up the wrong tree. This, mo this printer has already been released, but they called it the L or Micromake L2. And the Micromake L2 has got user groups. And so I was able to find people who were able to help me, able to help me find some more film, who told me that if I hadn't have destroyed my screws in trying to remove the back here, uh, that I could have just taped over this and kept printing over it with a little bit of cellophane tape. Uh, the problem was I, in removing the screws, a little bit of the, the resin had gotten in here and when it hardened, it glued these screws on. I've stripped these screws out. I'm going to have to drill them out and then when I put it back just have a couple of empty screw spots but it should work just fine in in replacing this sheet so that's something I've got to do in the future to get this thing back to printing but I appreciate now that I know that I've got support that I've got people who are have this 3d printer and are able to help me with it and so that has been instrumental a couple other things that you're going to need to know. Buy some more gloves. Buy some isopropyl alcohol. Try to get the 90% stuff. Uh, this is not that. But uh, some of these resins you can wash off with isopropyl alcohol. I also heard somewhere that you should cure these things in water because oxygen slows down the curing process. So fill up a vat full of water, drop the print in there, and then put it in the sun. Don't do that. It makes the curing go white. I don't know why, but... Apparently, that was not the right answer, at least not for this resin. And I heard that maybe the problem is that this is a water-soluble resin. And so if it's a water-soluble resin that they send with it, uh, then yeah, this is the wrong stuff to submit or to submerge in water. But maybe some other resins are better for that. And maybe I've been wrong to use isopropyl alcohol on these resins because this is a water curing resin. I should just wash it off in water and then uh, do the light curing. Let's also talk about light curing. Uh, after you print your models, there's still going to be some uncured resin on the outside of it. And the idea is if you want a perfectly accurate print, you wash that off either with alcohol or water, depending on the resin, and then you cure it in UV light. And there's a couple of ways you can do that one way they provide for you. This case, it doesn't just keep the UV light away from it while it's printing, but after you're done printing, you can unplug the printer, plug in the top here, and there's a UV light in here to cure it. How cool is that? However, I don't like that you have to unplug it and replug it in and that you can only either be printing or curing. Of course, you can always just put them out in the sun for a little while, and that mostly works. Or you can do something that my buddy Russ Harmilio of Archimedes Design did and build this. Now, I know it's a Christmas tin, but inside this Christmas tin has been put a string of LED uh, lights. And yeah. He wrapped it all around here and used metal tape to make sure it would remain as reflective as possible. And then, and then, just for a finishing touch, he got this on eBay. This little, little disc here, when it hit, gets in the sun or UV light, it rotates. So once you put it under here, it spins around, making sure that you get full coverage. I don't even think that's necessary with all these LEDs on here, but I think it's so cool that I just, I love it. So he made his own little curing chamber and that this curing chamber does a better job than even the professional ones that you could buy from other companies. Honestly, just having this and putting it out in the sun would probably be enough to do the job. But I love the ingenuity of this Christmas tin UV light cure with the solar panel or solar powered uh, revolving plate that I just, I gotta show you guys that. That is so cool. <laughs> Russ, you're a stud. Love it. So yeah, th this has been an interesting process. It's been basically me going back to square one 
in 3D printing, as far as 3D printing with this process. Almost nothing that I know of FFF 3D printing translated over to 3D printing with this machine, other than the fact that there's a build plate and it needs to be very level. Aside from that, it's all wild west out here for me for learning how to use this. And the thing is with this printer, you're gonna be very wild west. You're not getting a lot of support from the manufacturer. You're not getting a lot of support from anybody else. It's a very manual process and you're gonna be figuring it out. You and anybody else you can find online who might also have one of these 3D printers. And, and that's exciting. I haven't had this experience for five years in 3D printing of just being completely out of my element and messing it up and, and breaking it and having to fix it. Ah, feels good, man. Now, as of the time of this recording, they're hard to get a hold of right now. They're all out on Amazon. They're all out on Gearbest. You can find some of them on AliExpress. So I will try to track down where you can get this printer and give you links to it as much as I possibly can because if you are interested in light curing, high resolution 3D printing, you cannot find a, a, a cheaper solution than this that comes complete and ready to go besides building it yourself. So this to me is the bargain basement version of this and it works and the software for it is better than anything I've ever seen. Come on guys, FFF 3D printers, take a note from this software and put it on these 3D printers. I wanna see this here. It's, it's cool and it's, it's super functional and I'm super impressed with it. And, and I'm going to have very many adventures just as soon as I am done recording videos for March Madness. Uh, because I got some more printers that I need to talk about first. And then me and this printer are going to be having some fun times. I wanna thank you very much for watching. I wanna thank my Patreon backers again, you guys. Your support is more necessary than ever and I appreciate it so much. And I wanna say thank you very much for watching. Safety first. See you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.